the order of Brandon Board of Education regular meeting and public hearing on bullying policy, July 17, 2023. Uh, can I get a roll call? Jane? Here. Here. Come in, Herb? Here. Kim? Here. Hillary? Here. Jeff? Yes. Carly? Yes. Jan? Here. Coy? Here. All right, it's time for a bunch. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First is the uh, superintendent report. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, although there are no students here, there are a lot of people on our grounds. It's like an ant farm over at Harvey right now. Um, we've had a lot of work, a lot of progress is happening with our uh, bond projects for the summer. Um, I invited Brian uh, to come to the board meeting this evening and provide an update of all the construction projects across the district that are in progress. So Brian, I turn it over to you, please. Good evening. Okay, so uh, here to update you on progress and what's been going on for the summer. So um, we're just getting all ready to go. Um, so Moving forward, yeah. that forward for you. So, uh, first of all, we um, we're still in design right now for projects that will be done in twenty four, summer twenty four. So we've been cut heavy in design on those projects. And just to recap, what's uh, still remaining on the bond that we're doing design drawings for uh, that these will grow in the fall. At the middle school, there will be classroom report or flooring replacement. Uh, we've already walked the building, but we'll be meeting with the new principal in August to review those, those flooring uh, areas. Mostly we're concerned about the carpeted areas right now, which is a lot of the classrooms and some of the corridors. Uh, the, a lot of the always have the hard tile that'll be staying. We're not taking that up. We're mostly going to focus on the carpet areas. That's the areas that are going to be worn out. So uh, when the administrator gets here, we'll walk the building. Uh, there's also some old, uh, there's still a couple of old hollow metal doors, exterior doors that need to be replaced. So we've identified those, Mark and I have walked. Uh, roof replacement, that was also a bond issue project. Um, there was a report done, uh, anyway, there was a report done that uh, evaluated the roof thing. It's a single ply membrane. There is currently no leaks right now, no active leaks, but the uh, inspection uh, report identified that this hearing is life in about one year from now so it's one of those situations that uh, it's not leaking now but when it gets to the end of its life who knows so that was a bond project that was identified a couple years back that's going to be a need replacement so we evaluated that um uh, the other thing is the mechanical uh rooftop compressors are slated to be uh replaced uh, we've looked at that mark and i with the uh, mechanical engineers, they've gone up into the penthouse and they, they're going to prepare a couple of options for you to present to you in August, as far as there's a couple different directions we can take in replacement of those older units. So um, I think Steve's gonna be here in August to, at the, at the uh, workshop, uh, the uh, committee of the whole, and he'll explain the, what the findings are and what their recommendations are. So you can 
choose which way to move forward. Similar to what we did with the pool unit. Remember, we had discussions and there's a couple of different ways. So we'll uh, present that to you in August. I have a quick question. Was this the so the middle school um roof we had talked about? Maybe it wouldn't need it, so it does for sure need a pole replacement. Yeah, okay. Yeah, unfortunately, it was uh, the report identified areas of life and the Longest life it was done, the report was done in 2018. The longest life expired in 23. So uh, okay. we can't get any more life out of it. Brian? Yes. You know what? It helps if I take out the UFB out of it and plug it in for the part to work. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's. The issue. I'm sitting here thinking, why is that? The pointer works good. Oh, I got a pointer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need that in a few minutes. We'll get into some pictures. Okay, so next one the high school. Again, there's some exterior doors that are the older metal style, mostly around the pool area. We'll be replacing those with aluminum. The pool scoreboard and timing system, we bid that out last year, but we did not have any bids received. So I'm going to put that back out for kids and uh, make sure that we get proper coverage on those kids. And then the metal roof replacement. That, uh, we held off purpose,ly on that to make sure we got the dehumidification unit on order first. We don't want to replace the roof until we get that unit on. And so that will happen in summer 20 as well. We'll go back with the same similar type of a metal roof, but we have to do a total tear off all the way down to the deck because that roof system, the insulation and the wood composition was compromised because of when we did not have the humidity of the barrier the dehumidification. Uh, for parking lot work, the two uh, projects that will be going out for bids for 24, obviously the Harvey Swanson new design that we've talked about, and also Goodman Drive, the connecting drive between the high school and the middle school. Those will be the two projects that will be uh, going out for bids. Uh, preliminary drawings have been given to Rich for estimating to make sure we're on track. Uh, I'd like to do that to, uh, to see if he tests the waters basically with them, make sure that we're on, we're on budget. So he's got those drawings in hand. Unfortunately, he's not off this week. He went to the Bahamas. Now, don't you go to the Bahamas in like December, it's January? I don't know why he's going in time. <laughs> but he's in the Bahamas. Yeah. So again, those projects I just mentioned, uh, we're targeting for going out in October uh, to bring those in and get those awarded prior to Christmas. And I'll get us on track for the summer 24 construction season. Um, okay, construction update. So this is where we get a little exciting. So at the, uh, the high school, um, we've got uh, the, the screen wall. This is the screen wall for the new uh, pool unit that's being built. You've probably seen that driving around there. Uh, foundations in for the unit and they're finishing up the wall. They probably got another two weeks to go before they totally finish that that wall. Uh, so we wanted to get as much done as we could this summer. Next summer, they'll lift it up with the crane, drop it over the wall, and then that will, will be the big pool thing. The pool will be shut down for quite a bit next year while we do the duct work and the, and the new unit and then the roof system. We have to paint, scrape the deck and paint it. It's gonna be a, a lot of work inside the pool next summer. So these are, these again are just pictures of them with progress. This picture on the right is the New toilet room that's going downstairs by the Performing Arts Center for the students to use. They've already cut the floor. They've got the underground sanitary in for the new uh, toilet room. So that's in progress as well. Out in the back, uh, in case you don't have gone by the uh, shop area here, we removed that concrete. And the, the problem was the rain was coming off of the metal roof there, just causing a severe problem. You see the deterioration of the masonry. And over time, this is actually a steel channel that rusted out over time. So we cut that channel about two feet up and then welded a new steel channel onto it. When they're done with the brick work out front at the uh, screen wall, they'll move back here and they'll be replacing about 28 inches of this wall all the way down with new brick. You can see, it, it's, it's, if you go out there, it's terrible. It's even worse than the picture, but um, they'll be replacing all that with new brick. This is the new underground line for the rainwater. So when we're gonna put a new gutter and attach it to the top up here, which will catch the rainwater. It'll take it to a downspout. Downspout will take it directly to these guys. There's five of them. You kind of see one, two, three. So there's five downspouts along the wall. That uh, pipe was underground and tied into a catch basin. 
So we'll take as much water as we can directly into the sewer rather than having it fly off of there and damage the concrete, damage yeah. the wall. So that's that's well underway now. Like I said, we're just waiting for the mason to come over and, and do this thing. And then there's another picture of the uh, of the screen wall for the pool unit. Middle school, they've got the underground electrical in. This is the trench that goes out to the ball field. Uh, we've got the underground electrical is completed. Um, there, uh, the dugouts and so forth are coming in a couple of weeks. So they're going to wait about another week before they start doing any mobilization out on the ball field. So the dugouts and the press box come because they all, those are prefabricated units. They actually lift them off of the truck with a crane. They'll set them in place and do the fencing around that. So you didn't want to jump the gun and get too much, too far going in case they had to make adjustments. And then, of course, this is all the pictures of the uh, football field and track. They have started the track today. They're starting on the southeast corner, removing of the asphalt base, as we talked about last time. So we're on track, we're on schedule for that. Uh, a couple of weeks, they'll get the new base down, and the turf will be here on the 2nd of August. We can start putting the turf in. So we'll, we're, right now, we're on schedule for having a full turf field for a start for uh, football games. Uh, they'll come back in September and actually do the running surface onto the track. So they'll get the they'll get the new surface down for football season so they can't get damaged. And then they'll come back in September, put the track down, the track surface that has to cure for about two weeks, and then they'll stripe it. So that'll happen uh, later on. Oh, also at the middle school, uh, the ITEC, we're, we're doing the bathroom, the, the new door to the outside for the bathrooms. The door frames are here. So they're starting to frame those walls up inside and then they'll punch the hole through the wall for the outside and also punch the hole through the wall for the secure vestibule for the main office. That'll happen in about a week. So they're on track for that. Here's another picture of the, of the track as it sits kind of today. That's the dust collector out behind the high school. I just want to throw that in there because that's also on your agenda tonight to, uh, as an action item to replace this guy. He is original to the building. Um, reminds you of the Tin Man and Wizard of Oz when you find him, he's all rusted and everything. But um, so he's moved off to the side, uh, out of harm's way of the previous pictures that I showed you. Back. So he sits way back here. And uh, what we'll be doing is, um, well, I'll wait for that. I'll talk about it later. So, um, Construction update at Swanson now. So the demolition is complete, all the floors are removed, all the doors are removed, all the new flooring is on site. They've got the ECC classrooms near completed and also they've just finished the hallway down by the ECC. So they started on the west side and they're moving from left to right in the building. Uh, the new doors have shipped. Uh, we're not here yet, but it's a good thing that they shipped. I was mentioning to Carly, as wood doors have been a real thorn in our side over the last couple of summers, just the time it takes to get them. Some of them are 40 weeks out. So they've been a real problem, but we did get verification that they are on their way, which is great. Uh, roofing is about another uh, week or two uh, off to finish the roofing. And then they will jump over to the three small areas they have here at the high school. Uh, Media Center has been uh, remodeled. They have the new wall built for the presentation wall and then the cafeteria, all the, uh, the ceiling is back uh, in place for the new cafeteria unit, which is not here though. We're not expecting that to be here till the beginning of December. So right now we're shooting for the replacement of the unit during Christmas break, which is everything will be above the roof. They won't need to come inside. All their interior work will be done. So here's some update photos. Uh, again, just with the floor stripped, gone. See all these, uh, this is a floor that's prepared right here with the new mastic down. And then that's the new finish in the, the classroom. It's more like the, the wood plank feel. And these are some other photos. Remember they're all glass that we had uh, down the hallway in the north, uh, the south, actually the north hallway. Uh, we took the glass panels out, filled those in for lockdown purposes. So now you can, we have control over vision into the rooms for privacy. Uh, these are in the older fifth grade wing. These used to be recessed uh, cabinets and uh, from way back when those were all removed and there's new cabinets going to be coming in and filling in these spots. So those areas are prepared and waiting. 
Here's the cafeteria, the ceiling grid's all buttoned up. We had to take it down to reinforce the steel joists that are going to hold the new unit. The new unit's about 1,200 pounds heavier than the existing unit on the roof. So the structural engineer had us go in and do some reinforcements of the bar joists to support the new unit. So that's all done. The, see the grid's all buttoned up and completed. Um, that's the new wall that was stud framed in the uh, media center. Um, this used to be, it's standing in this, point, this vantage point was the office over here and then there was another single little room over there so we flew all that out we gained that floor space for presentation and group uh, discussion area for the children so this wall will be a drywall it's actually drywall today and it's they already had the first sanding done that'll be floor to ceiling marker board paint it's full height and wall to wall so kids can just go up there and collaborate and do projects right on the wall and then there'll also be a presentation board there technology wise to uh to have technology. So currently the only thing in the, the uh, media center, I think we talked about this a while ago, there's one television, that's all you've got. So now you'll have full technology capability to access the internet and, uh, and do projects in that, in that room. So that's very exciting. Some more vantage points. This is some of the painting going on. This is the ECC wing. These are all, all these rooms, these walls right now are that baby blue. So you can see they're, they're painting over. And there's the old lavender hallway. It's almost gone now. They're getting rid of that lavender hallway. Um, again, the main, this is the main uh, drag. The, the lockers will be painted as well. There's a color, it'll be a light gray, to correspond with the color scheme. Uh, they're just not painted yet. They'll do that after the floor is done. And then this is a typical classroom getting ready for the, for the floor. There's more of a close up shot of the. Uh, the wood floor in the early childhood. Uh, one thing that happened, the demolition contractor that came in um, to remove the flooring, he's got like a little tractor. It's got like a snow shovel in the front. And they went crazy. They went nuts. And the reason I'm showing this picture is because right here, they did some damage. They were just not very, um, cautious in some areas. So they did damage some of the cubbies. Those will be replaced. We already had discussion with them at their expense. Um, and they damaged some door frames. Some of the door frames were nicked up. So um, Rich and Larry were very upset because um, the guy was actually working without a supervisor. He just showed up and just went crazy. They also removed a room that they weren't supposed to even touch. They took the carpet and the tile out. So you're going to get a free room there. But uh, so anyway, after they got control of the guy, he's, he, he did a better job but so anyway we'll do some repairs and these are the semi trucks that are out in the gravel lot by the football field there you've probably seen that that's where all the furniture is right now <laughs> from the elementary school it's in a holding pattern uh, we're still on schedule around the 21st of august to get the furniture start being delivered here there's two different installing companies there's four different manufacturers coming during starting the week of august 21st there's over 2,000 pieces of new furniture and file cabinets and everything that's coming into the elementary school. We're holding on to all this furniture because chances are we're going to be missing something or something's going to come damaged or whatever. So after they move everything in, they assemble it, put it in place where it's supposed to go. We'll do an inventory. If we're missing a desk, missing a chair, we'll go into the semi-truck, get stuff temporarily just to start school, make sure everybody's got a desk and a chair and then uh, work with the vendors. So hopefully I won't have to tell you anything like that. With 2,000 pieces, chances are we're going to have some kind of a hiccup. But, but we're holding on to everything until the uh, new furniture gets here. And then uh, when we do get the stuff, then they'll just come and hook those guys up and take it away. So that's my update for today. That's all I brought. Um, you can see everything's moving pretty fast. Uh, still a couple of things here. Let's see. We're on schedule again at Swanson. Everything's good. I uh, guess the cafeteria unit was the thing. Again, it's supposed to be at the beginning of December, so we'll probably put that in at Christmas break. Uh, the art room unit, though, that is on its way. That's going to be fine. Uh, we talked about the middle school. They'll be doing the secure vestibule and the toilet area in the back. That'll be done for school. Uh, they did complete the pool work underneath for the new piping for the uh, pool mechanical system. That is complete now. Um, what else I got? Again, the gutters will start uh, when they get done with the screen wall. They'll move to the back of the building, do the gutters with the, the wall repair. Uh, 
Let's see what else here. Roping is fine. As soon as you're done at Swanson, I'll get over to the high school. And then in baseball, we talked about um, we'll start in about two weeks or so uh, with the fencing and uh, redoing the fields and then just wait for the dugouts and the press box to get there. They come assembled already. They just lift them off the truck and pop them on. Because uh, they have to put, if you remember, we're also erecting all of that foul ball fencing, the 30 foot high fencing that goes down each of the baselines as well. That'll be one of the last things they'll do after the dugouts are in place. So that'll go through the whole month of August will be construction of the uh, baseball field. And they did start work at the tennis courts too. The nets are down and they're going to start uh, clearing out the cracks. They do have a crack fill to do and a repair and then they'll put the new topping down. So that'll take a couple of weeks out there for tennis courts. But they do have the courts on the east side are already, the nets are already down and they're starting to uh, empty, uh, clean out the cracking. Is there any questions I can answer for anybody? Yeah. Now, is all the abatement done now they're putting the flooring done, all that? Yeah, abatement's done. We did find a couple of classrooms on the extreme east side of Swanson that had some asbestos tile underneath. So we had Nova come back. Nova's the uh, consultant that has the uh, ability, and they brought in a contractor over a weekend and they removed those several classrooms of, uh, of asbestos tile that was hiding under the carpet. So we did have a few rooms that we did not anticipate, but that is all gone now. We got the clearance letter, so there's going to be no issues down there. Oh, yeah, that, that's part of their procedure. Once they get done there, they submit to Lansing that, the, that everything is cleared. Because they had the, uh, the air monitoring system up and all their venting and at Bisque and everything was up, and they were doing that procedure. Well, what about inspection? Then all the trenches out that, that filled in without everything's inspected. Yeah, this is all state inspected. So the Bureau of Construction Codes, uh, every contractor has its own permit, mechanical electrical building. And as they do underground for exposed, they have the inspector come out and do visual before they cut up any work. And there's no local control. This is all state uh, bureau construction codes and fire marshal. Good. Huh? All right. Thanks. Still got to stick around. I got one more thing. All right, thank you very much, Brian. That's a lot of good stuff to share. So I think to see the photos yeah, too. Yeah, it's really, really neat. So thank you for taking the time to put that together. It's appreciated. Um, I wanted to share um, that we do have a public hearing uh, during this meeting today. Um, the board has been very conscientiously working through a policy adoption process um, to uh, transfer our policies over to a true law firm. As a part of that process, there is a step that we are required to take, which forces us to hold a public meeting regarding our anti-bullying policy. Um, and that will be occurring this evening. It's um, that's what's expected to do is what we're required to do. And we will be doing that as a part of our process as we go ahead this evening and uh, move uh, uh, with our core policy adoption process. So just wanted to put that out there so everyone was aware of what we were doing as we were having our meeting this afternoon or this evening. And uh, I'm all set at this time. Thank you. Um, so now we have public comments and questions on agenda business. Is so we'll do that then. then. Thank you. Okay, and then approval of consent agenda. I get it. Oh, let the Brandon Board of Education approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. Any discussion? May I roll call vote? Jane? Yes. Yes. Lisa? Yes. Kim? Yes. Hillary? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. All right. Uh, finance report. Jansies. <laughs> Good evening. I just had a couple of things tonight. The first one we have voted tonight on the um, school bond loan fund resolution. That's a borrowing resolution. 
I just wanted to take a minute to explain what that was. Um, we this year have um, $10.4 million of debt service payments. Our tax levy we will fall a bit short of that $10.4 million. So we need to borrow um, a little over $300,000. So this resolution gives me the ability in the spring, don't borrow the fall, we have enough to make our interest payments for that. This gives me the ability to fill out the necessary paperwork for Treasury to um, have these funds deposited into our debt account so that we can make those payments. So that's what the resolution is, is about tonight. Um, we are on schedule to um, repay the school bond loan fund in 2032. That's a mandatory year that we, we must repay. We are on schedule to do that as well. So um, any questions on the school bond loan fund resolution? The um, second item I wanted to discuss with you, uh, the school, our school aid, our foundation, uh, state aid package has been uh, signed by the governor. So I wanted to give the board a quick update. That's what this sheet is about. Um, this is uh, estimated uh, funding that we will be receiving. A couple of these items, I'm not sure of all the details, but uh, the first one is our foundation uh, payment. And that is that can be used for all general operations. And based on the increase of $458 per pupil, which is exactly what we budgeted this year. So it did come, come true or come to uh, go along with what we budgeted. We would receive $908,000 more, $908,951. However, and that, that's a big money, that's a big number, but um, we, if we were to lose 50 students, which is, um, that's the number we budgeted, that foundation allowance would then re be reduced by 480. So on the right hand there, we would see an increase of 428,000, um, not so much, not as big of a number. Um, if we were to lose 75 students, then we would just see an increase of 188,351. We, right now, we're, we're down a little more than we thought right now, but hopefully we're going to make that up in the next few weeks. So that's why I did add the 75 FTE even tabs on the enrollment. Um, this next one is a new um, line item categorical. It's called the Educator Compensation Payment. So we, we're supposed to be receiving 93588 and that is strictly to um, pay our teachers. So, um, and again, we don't have a lot of details of what that looks like, but it is, it's, it's meant for teacher payment. Um, next one, enrollment stabilization payment. This one, I, I, I tried all day to get more information, but it is what it says. Um, those districts like us, that we've been losing students. So there is money this year for us to receive, and, and that's a number 385,000. Um, the next one, 31A, we always receive 31A, and that is for at-risk students. Um, we're, that's going up 230,267. That's a nice increase. The next one I wanted to, um, this year we received 31 AA money for mental health. That was a new, a new categorical. And then we separately received our section 97. I know Jason talked about that money for school safety. Together this year, um, we received more. Next year, we're slated to receive 450,000. What they've done is they've combined, they got rid of section 97, but they're saying that you can use 31 AA for school safety. So they've combined those two. Um, right now, it looks like we're gonna lose about 53,626 in that um, categorical. This early literacy instruction, again, um, this is additional money. Um, I don't have details. I may have a public back with the details on that, but um, obviously it's going to have something to do with early, early literacy. Um, 215,000, section 41, we always get. Um, and then our special ed foundation is a nice increase of 164,000. Um, the last one here is, uh, it, it's good news. I, I don't know if you've heard, but um, we are, we will be, there will be a free breakfast and lunch for all students, regardless of income level, um, just like we had in COVID and then it went away and now that's back. So um, that's good news. So all in all, good news for watching our enrollment because that could um, hinder our increase a little bit. 
but these other categoricals will be helpful. So especially as we lose our ESSER funds after this year, we'll be able to use some of the like free money money to help sustain um, mental health professionals. So that's, that's good news. Any questions on our funding? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, over to action items. Um, approval of human resource reports. Move to the Board of Education approve the human resource report as presented. Support. Any discussion? May I roll call vote? Jane? Yes. Herb? Yes. Lisa? Yes. <laughs> yes. Larry? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Approval of annual school bond loan fund resolution. Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the school bond loan fund resolution as presented. Support. Any discussion? Can I get a roll call vote? Jane? Yes. Herb? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Kim? Yes. Hillary? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Approval of Best Collector Bid Award Recommendation. Move the, the Brandon Board of Education approve the Dust Collector Bid Award recommendation as presented. Support. Any discussion? Can I get a roll call vote? Kim? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Herb? Yes. James? Yes. Hillary? Yes. Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Approval of superintendent contract amendment. Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the superintendent contract amendment as presented. Support. Any discussion? Can I roll call vote? Jane. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Herb? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Kim? Yes. Hillary? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Approval to adopt the resolution to repeal board policies. Will the Brandon Board of Education approve to repeal its existing policies, bylaws, and administrative guidelines with the exception of existing board policy 5517.01, the current bullying policy as presented? Support. Any discussion? Can I get a roll call vote? Jane? Yes. Herb? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Kim? Yes. Hillary? Yes. Jeff, yes. Rebecca? Yes. Approval to adopt the policy manual. Oh, approval to adopt the new policy manual with exception of policy 5207, anti-bullying as presented. Oh, what is Oh, it doesn't have a move. Because we have to do the public hearing. Right? No, we do have to do something. Oh, we have nine. Is this just, is F not, do I have to change that to move to adapt? Sorry. Which one F F. we have? Instead of approval, should it say move? A brand new policy. Yes, I, yes. Okay, yes. But it's not just after that. Move to adopt the new policy. Okay, so sorry. Okay, yes. so well, let's go back to F. Okay, approval to adopt the, the policy manual. With the exception. Move, the, move to approve the adoption of the new policy manual with the exception of policy 5207 anti-bullying as presented. Support. Any discussion? Can I get a roll call vote? Jane. Yes. Herb. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Kim. Yes. Hillary. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. At this time, uh, I'd like to engage uh, into the public hearing on proposed policy 5207, anti-bullying. Okay, and now we'll go to action items. Approval to repeal policy 5517.01. Move the Brandon Board of Education approve to repeal existing board policy 5517.01, bullying policy as presented. That's any discussion? Can I get a roll call vote? Jane? Yes. Herb? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Kim? Yes. 
Hillary. Yes. Yes, Rebecca. Yes. Approval to adopt policy 5207 anti Boeing. Let the Brandon Board of Education approve to adopt policy 5207 anti Boeing as presented. Support. Support. Any discussion? Can I roll call vote? Jane? Yes. Berg? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Kim? Yes. Marie? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Um, I just, uh, as we wrap that up, I just want to thank the board uh, for their commitment. It's been quite a few late nights uh, working on uh, the policy, and it is greatly appreciated. It's actually been a wonderful activity for me as I transition into the superintendency roles. So uh, that's, I'm, I'm very pleased to have had that opportunity to do that with you. And secondly, I'd like to thank Maria. Um, it's been a tremendous amount of work. Uh, making the revisions and edits and, and to ensure that the desires of the board is represented accurately on the paper in which uh, is now in front of you. So Maria, thank you very much for your preparation. It is very much so appreciated. In front of you, you all have a policy binder with all of the policies in which you, um, you know, laid comment in which we all came to consensus on with all the changes uh, within there. I do want it to be noted that um, we are currently working with board book to then take these policies and update them and put them online. Um, we um, anticipate that being completed within the next 30 days. And so by the time school begins, um, ideally mid-August, 30 days will lead us to mid-August, all this will be updated on board book. We're currently engaged in the process as we speak. So administrative guidelines and forms are next. But this was the biggie. So thank yeah. you very much for your commitment. It's, it's greatly appreciated. I know it's a lot of work on your base part. So well, we you. appreciate you helping us through that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, was, that was a lot for everyone. And it's um glad it's done. That's good stuff. Too. Yeah, it is. It is. All right. Now on to citizen inputs. We have Brooklyn Carr here to talk to us about backpack policy. Good evening. My name is Brooklyn Carr. I am going into my junior year of high school too. And um, I'm here to talk about that policy for Grand High School. Um, which I'm sure, like many of you know, that backpacks are a huge thing for high schoolers with like all the books that they carry around. But um, you're probably wondering, you know, why would a student just come to the board to about like just talk about backpacks? And it all started with um, an end of the year product that I took and with my AP government class and my teacher coached me up to take it to the board because I was really passionate about it and so I did so here I am. Um, so since June 2nd I took what I've learned from my AP statistics class and my AP government class and combined what I've learned to conduct a survey on 25% of the students and teachers of Grand High School which is approximately 150 students and 10 teachers. Um, provided with this letter that I given uh, was a survey that I used for each and every student that was surveyed and teachers that were surveyed um, to make sure that there was equal representation of the students' opinions. I asked 50 9th, 10th, and 11th graders that were surveyed to fill this out. Um, they were all random. The survey was given out randomly, like I said, in order to avoid Voluntary bias, a couple of relevant questions were added to the survey to avoid the bias of people knowing what the actual intent of the survey was. And I conducted this survey by taking a stratified random sample by, and you guys probably don't know what that is, but um, in other words, I went into random classrooms um, and I asked the teacher to hand out a survey to 10 random students and they would fill it out and they, I would get the results back online because it was like a QR code. So yeah, that's how that happened. And resiliency <laughs> was included in the survey by having the option to choose an answer from strongly agree to strongly disagree. This helped show how passionate students and teachers were about the topics that were asked. And the first question of the survey was backpack should be in school. And out of 150 students surveyed, 101 students strongly, strongly agreed and 38 agreed with the statement. And out of the 10 teachers surveyed, Three strongly agreed and three agreed with the statement. And this data can be displayed to the right of the text. If you're curious to see the results of the rest of the survey, it's also included. 
Um, after analyzing all the collected data from the survey, we can concluded that majority of not only students, but teachers would like to have backpacks back in school and in the classrooms. I have had many teachers tell me personally that they would like to have them back because it would help students more prepare the class and not forgetting their belongings like calculators and pencils and such. This would also help students be more prepared. Um, but I'm here today because I'm not only voicing myself, I'm voicing the rest of the students that I've heard talk about this and the teachers that I've heard talk about this. Um, I've been affected by this backup policy because, you know, it's, you know, this previous year I was a sophomore in high school. I enrolled in the STEM program. I take, well, I took two AP classes and, and an honors English. So it's a lot of textbooks, a lot of papers that I carry around every single day. Um, a lot of my classes are close to my locker, unfortunately. So with the five minutes of passing time that we have in between classes, I'm really not able to make it to my locker in there in time without being tardy. With that being said, I carry all my belongings with me all day long, which causes a little bit of strain, you know, but you get stronger. <laughs> so um, according to a website called Eagles Call, which is published by and for the students of Valley Middle School STEM, allowing backpacks in classrooms would help prevent students from being tardy and have more workspace on desks and tables and would prevent teachers from starting class later instead of to wait for students to come in a little after class. Not only would this benefit the students, but it also benefit the teachers as well. And obviously the biggest counter to this whole thing is the safety issues within the school. Every day, Brandon High School students have to walk through the metal detectors um, with their backpacks. If the metal detector is set off, the security guards at the high school go through them to make sure that nothing is dangerous in them. This makes it perfectly safe for backpacks to be kept in the classrooms. Um, with the metal detectors and security, there should be no reason for students not to be allowed to have to carry their backpacks in the classrooms if there's nothing dangerous in them. Um, I didn't add this part to the letter, but I thought I would add it because I was furthering my research at home because I'm just really passionate about it. But to further my review to this kind of argument, Oklahoma police displayed how textbooks can stop bullets. They demonstrate this by firing multiple rounds at textbooks from close range with a handgun and an AR-15. It took two textbooks to stop the bullets from hitting the target with the handgun and three textbooks for the AR-15. This shows how backpacks can actually like, be used to protect students. Um, with me, I know that I carry around like a lot of textbooks from class to class. Um, teachers have put shelves in there so we get keyword textbooks in there. So to make it easier, like with the load that we carry around, but not every teacher does that, or do they have like a space for it in their classrooms? Um, but therefore, I ask you to take everything that has been provided into consideration and possibly consider bringing backpacks back into the classrooms of Grand High School. Um, thank you for your time, guys. Well, thank you. That was really thank you for putting this information together for us. Yeah. That was really thorough. We appreciate that. You did a great job. Thank you. I'm very impressed with the sample yeah. and the data. And I think that the data that you provided outside of even backpacks is important for us to consider. So I appreciate that. And I don't know, Rebecca and Carly, I'd like to see us get this added at some point to maybe the next agenda so we can talk about it. All right. Well, thank you. And now... Adjournment. Seven twelve. Seven twelve. Okay. All right. Okay.